This is called mail. You take an envelope, stick it in the mail slot, and hopefully within a couple of days, the person you sent it to gets it. But this is called email, electronic mail. Hit a couple of keys, and the message I just wrote is already sitting in the mailbox of the person I wrote to. Now, this is a kind of space age example. With this grid computer, it can send and receive mail through radio waves. There are no wires, as you can see. But even with any personal computer and a modem, you too can use electronic mail. We'll show you how on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 and 2400 baud modems. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Leading Edge, leading the way to the information age. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Gary Kildall and George Morrow are away today, so with me is Jan Lewis, who in her other life is president of the Palo Alto Research Group. Jan, we're talking email. This is something called Inbox. This Mac is part of an Apple Talk network right now. Watch how quickly I can play with mail. I simply click to see what's in my inbox. There's all the stuff in there. I double click to see what the message is from Cynthia Green. I can read her message right over there. Suppose I want to reply to Cynthia. All I do is go like that, hit my reply, say I want to send it, and boom, it's all done. Now, that is fast email. Mm. Now, a lot of people, when computers first came into the office environment, said there would be the paperless office. We know that never happened. A lot of email people are saying, well, there won't be any paper in the inbox. Do you think that will ever happen? <laughs> you know, every new computer advance holds the promise of the paperless office. But the fact is that the paperless office is about as likely as the paperless bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, email is going to greatly speed up the effectiveness and the productivity of communication. If you think about that message that uh, Cynthia Green mm -hmm. sent to you, it probably took her maybe 60 seconds to send you that message and maybe 20 seconds for you to respond. Right. Think about how long that would have taken by regular phone. So email may not save paper. It certainly does save time. Absolutely. Jan, we're going to take a look at some of the latest developments in electronic mail today. We'll also take a look at two voicemail systems which really do eliminate paper. Now, suppose you have a very large company, offices all over the country, tens of thousands of employees. Can you still use email? We'll find out in this report. Computers are accused of all sorts of dehumanizing effects, maybe because of their inhuman way of communicating with us. On the other hand, computers are often the means to better human communication, especially over long distances. The McDonnell Douglas Company, better known for its airplanes, is also a major supplier of communications networks, nationally and internationally. To exchange messages with its far-flung offices, the company uses an electronic mail system called OnTime. OnTime is available to anyone in the company with access to a terminal and a password. It provides each office with a secure way of transmitting data, because the sender can address messages to as many or as few individuals as specified. OnTime is a wide area network designed to link distant terminals rather than adjacent offices. Users around the world can reach the mail system with just a local phone call. And sending a message to Europe takes about as long as sending one down the street. Along with messages and files, OnTime is capable of transmitting graphics, like this chart from Lotus 123. The appeal of international electronic mail is growing. More than 500 companies in 68 countries use the TimeNet Communications Network to transmit over a million messages a month. And if suppliers and countries can ever agree on a standard protocol to simplify access, the number of online users can only increase.
Joining us now in the studio is Jeff Anderholm, product manager for Lotus Express with Lotus Corporation. And sitting next to Jeff is Stuart Davidson, product marketing manager with MCI. Jan? Stuart, what does email really do for the computer user? It provides a way, Jan, to send messages and send files that is much easier than methods that are currently used today. For example, courier or post office or fax. How about MCI mail in particular? How, how, how is that used? Suppose I'm a computer user, I own a PC, and I say, geez, I'd like to use MCI mail. What do I have to do to do that? Well, with the uh, joint software and service combination that we're talking about today, Lotus Express, you can put some software on your IBM PC and compose messages and send files to uh, anybody you wish to reach on the IBM, on the uh, MCI mail network. Right. Now, do I have to uh, join you, pay a monthly fee? What do I do? Yes, that's right. You, uh, in fact, by purchasing the Lotus Express software product, bundled in that is a one-year uh, registration fee, which will set you up for an account. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, you pay a simple per-message price for everything you send. You pay only for what you send. Mm -hmm. There's no charge if I'm sitting there online, let's say, without sending a message? No, there's no charge. Now, uh, you mentioned Lotus Express, and that's your territory, Jeff, so let's get into it. What is Lotus Express, and, and how does it help us do email? Okay. Uh, Lotus Express is a PC communications package that works with MCI Mail, uh, for, and it runs on IBM and uh, uh, compatible PCs. Mm -hmm. It lets users send and receive messages and telexes and transfer any PC file easily and uh, very quickly. And you can send uh, messages and files anywhere throughout the world okay, using the exactly, network. You've got Lotus Express up there. How does okay. it work? Well, well, right you've got, now, in fact, a Lotus spreadsheet up there right, right now. Right. Many of your viewers, I'm sure, will recognize one, two, three. Uh, here, I've got Lotus Express loaded in the background to monitor my mail. To call it up, I simply do Alt-Shift-R, and I get the incoming folder, shows me the messages uh, that I have uh, received automatically. I've not had to go out and dial into MCI. The program takes care of that for you. Now, now say, while you were in Lotus working on the Lotus spreadsheet, it could have been downloading a, a mail message? Right, and you would never have to say, go out and download it. It does it automatically okay. at, at specified intervals. So uh, to read a message, I simply highlight it and press Enter. And uh, seeing how it's uh, the holiday season and bear sales are down, Mr. Scrooge, I believe it's due to cheap materials that Tiny Tim insists on using. Hope this file helps. The file is an attached uh, binary file. In this case, it's a, it's a spreadsheet mm -hmm. file. And uh, to work with that, I pull up my uh, menu and go over to the filing command, whoops, and select to save that. I can save it uh, anywhere on my hard disk. You have to save it before you look at it, Jeff? Right. You have to save it because you have to access it using the appropriate uh, okay, application you've got program. Get it inside Lotus. Right. So we'll call this, uh, let's see, we'll call it bears.w. Okay, now it's saving it. To access that and work with it uh, mm -hmm. right away, I simply go back to one, two, three. And now I have a spreadsheet with the formulas and formats mm -hmm. intact, and I can work with it right away without having to rekey it. Okay, make sure there's no confusion, excuse me. This is not a, a Lotus add-on, I mean a 123 add-on. This is just called Lotus Express, but it would work under any application. It right? would work with any application and allow you to transfer any file. Anything you can store on, on your PC's disk, you, you can send via okay, So I could ship a binary file other than a Lotus spreadsheet, for example. You could send DBase files, you could send WordStar. What about, send... what about graphics? Can I send a Lotus graph? Yes, you can. Hmm. Anything. Now, uh, Stu, what about, Stuart, the, the question of security? People are concerned sometimes about using email systems and, and sort of sending your private messages up there in space. Is that a concern? It shouldn't be a concern. Obviously, there are some issues with all PC users, which they're familiar with, which has to do with the security of their own PC and the environment they work in. Within uh, uh, public uh, mail systems and within uh, those kinds of networks, they are usually a very secure system, the, uh, not only with the password protection, but also, also in the format in which the data is stored. One of the complaints that email users have, and maybe Lotus Express and other things will solve that, is it's, it's not very easy to use. It's a pain in the neck. It's complicated. The, the online editing is a mess and so on. How, you go, how have you solved those kinds of problems? You hit the nail right on the head, Stuart. There are a lot of basic adoption problems that have to do with ease of use and also with functionality. And what Lotus Express does is it makes it, as Jeff just demonstrated, very easy to send a message, to receive a message, to send a file, receive a message. I receive a file. It also takes care of some of the uh, 
convenience problems, like how do I know when my mail has arrived? It makes a tone to let you know that you've received something. How do I know uh, when to check my mail? It checks it for you. So it takes care of them with so, some of those problems. How the, often does it check the mail? Is it online all the time? Does it check it at intervals? It checks it at intervals, Jan. Mm -hmm. It checks at intervals that the user specifies. Now, now uh, MCI Mail has a relationship with CompuServe in some way, is that right? Yes, we have an interconnection with CompuServe. This means that People, the uh, 300,000 some odd subscribers on CompuServe can address and exchange messages with the 100,000 MCI Mail subscribers. So, in Even fact, if they are not CompuServe subscribers? Even if the MCI Mail person is not a CompuServe subscriber, okay. that MCI Mail subscriber, like you for example, could send a message to Jan who might be on CompuServe. Suppose, can I send a message using MCI Mail to somebody who isn't an MCI Mail customer? Absolutely. Uh, How do that? The way you would do that is you have a couple of options. They might be on one of the other electronic mail services I described, for example, CompuServe, or perhaps one of their private ones within their company. Mm -hmm. uh, or you could, if you needed to send your grandmother a, a note, yeah. you would simply use She's the... She's not on CompuServe. No, but you could use that postal option uh, okay. that we talked about, uh, and you can address a postal letter to be sent to her, either by courier or by uh, first-class delivery. Or if it were somebody's overseas, you could communicate with the 1.8 million... Telex terminals that Gentlemen, are out there. Thank you very much. We talked about the problem of user friendliness. Well, there's a new piece of software out that if you're a source subscriber is going to help you with email there, and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Joining us now in the studio is Lloyd Kreutzer, president of Kreutzer Software and the developer of Resource. Jan? Lloyd, we have been hearing an awful lot about Resource. Can you tell us what problems were you actually trying to solve with Resource? Well, Resource is a front end to the source. It's a program that runs on an IBM PC, and it uses the power of the PC to make online communications easy for the user. The source, as you know, provides a number of uh, electronic services. It provides electronic mail, it provides access to airline schedules, it provides access to news services, and it provides a, a bulletin board of free PC software. Uh, what a front end does is it makes access to all of those things much easier for PC users. Lloyd, we're focusing on electronic mail now, and I want you to show us how you would use resource to make it easier, more user friendly to use the email uh, capability of the source. Let me go through a typical scenario that a user might uh, who's using electronic mail might go through. Let me look into my inbox. In my inbox, I have a letter that I received earlier, and I'm going to select the view command and look at that letter. The letter says, uh, we have a customer that would like to know about the price and availability of Model 100 and Model 200 widgets. Now I'm going to select the reply command down here, and I'll, I'll type in the name of the file that I'm going to put the reply into. And that automatically brings up a full screen editor where I can type in uh, my reply. And I'll say, Dear, dear Bill, um, here is the information uh, that, you, uh, that you requested. Now, I have the, uh, the price list actually sitting in a file called widgets. And so I'll just select the widget file from that list. And that brings the price list right into my letter. And I'll just uh, end the letter up by saying, uh, uh, hope this is uh, uh, helpful. And that's all I really have to do. I select the uh, Save command and return to my menu. And now I'll select the Send command. And that brings up a list of all the messages in the outbox. And I'll select that message. The program will now automatically dial the source. It'll send that letter to Bill. And then when it finishes sending the letter, it will look in the inbox on the source and see if I have any mail waiting for me. Okay, two interesting things. It's, you were doing that all offline, number one, weren't you? That's correct. And the advantage is obviously you're not spending online charges while you're doing all that composition. And in fact, you were able to do all the command structure offline at the same time. That's right. Now, also, what about the editing capability? I, I, I saw you could edit a la word processor rather than the sometimes cumbersome online editors. This program has a number of features built into it, and one of them is a pop-up editor that is accessed through the mail script, and as a matter of fact, it's accessed at any point in the program. A single key will pop that up, and you can write a message in that, and then you can save it in your outbox. You can write messages all day long and send them only at one particular time. You can actually cut items off the screen and paste them right into the message. Now, what about the finding out whether you have incoming mail? You mentioned that right at the end. How do you do that? 
Well, if we look at the screen right now, you'll see that the message is just being sent. Uh, this window shows that the lines have, are being sent now. And as soon as this, uh, the send is complete, uh, a screen will come up and it will show whether or not there's any messages And we waiting. are online now. We are now online. And we're waiting for what the end, your, oh, there's your we're, inbox. We're waiting for the Basically. inbox and we have two messages here. One that's entitled uh, Financial Projections and Chicago Meeting Day Changed. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, do you, th this is particularly for the source. Uh, do you see this same kind of sort of user-friendly uh, interface being available for other kinds of communication services? Yes. One of the things that's truly unique about this product is that the interfaces in the product are based on a script programming language. And what that means to the user is that it will be very diff easy in the future to develop additional uh, interfaces. And the program comes with quite a few interfaces to uh, services on the source. In the future, we expect to see interfaces to other services. As a matter of fact, the source will be offering a special interest group online where uh, new interfaces will be available for download to users of the program. Okay, Lloyd, thank you very much. Resource. Okay. Now, suppose you have a company based in Palo Alto and you want to send email to people in Africa or the Philippines or other countries around the world. Can you still use email? We get the answer in this report from Wendy Woods. To get a letter from any of 131 agricultural research stations in places as remote as Nairobi or the Philippines now just takes an instant. They're all connected via an electronic mail system on Dialcom, an internationally accessed database. And all it takes to read the mail is to dial up the database via a modem on a computer. Sounds simple, but it wasn't. The network had to link local, regional, and national telephone systems, and problems ranged from poor transmission quality to government regulations. CGNet Services of Palo Alto, California, set up the network, a job which took three years and isn't done yet. Some of the places that you would think would be easy, like Rome, for example, took a couple of years because they were within, embedded within a large organization which required approval for buying a modem and the organization had to authorize the modem and then the phone company had to, so coordinating all the parts to get that to happen took quite a long time. But the main hurdle was not the hardware or the software, but the people, specifically getting them to use computers and modems. That job took Lindsay and his associates to nearly all the remote sites worldwide. CGNet provided all the equipment and the training necessary to operate it. This network, a low-cost, fast method of transferring large amounts of information, is now nearly complete. It's basically incredibly successful. I mean, it's become just another way of communication. I mean, to me, it's successful when it becomes just a normal accepted thing. And when you can free up millions of dollars to do research on what they're supposed to be doing, which is growing more food and feeding more people, uh, then that's, that's success, and that's happening all the time. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. Joining us in the studio now is Charles Foskett, president of Natural Microsystems, the makers of Watson, and also with us is Carl Burney, vice president for systems engineering at Speech Plus Incorporated. Carl, I love the idea of electronic mail, but suppose I'm on the road and I don't have my computer with me. How can your product help me? That's exactly what the Coltex 5100 system is all about, Jan. Uh, Coltex provides any caller from any telephone in the world to call a computer containing information that they're interested in and having that information read directly to them, uh, the information being stored in text form and delivered in voice over the telephone. So Carl, the information didn't have to be stored in any unusual way no, to be accessed. It's, it's exactly way. the same information that would otherwise appear on a terminal. Okay. We just happen to have a telephone right here for you and I want you to show me how you would use this to access a written message. Okay, I'll call um, a mail system. Uh, one. And you're dialing now. I'm, a, I'm dialing a call text system, which in turn is connected to an electronic mail system. Okay. okay. So, I mean, the message is stored where? In my PC back in my office? No, in the electronic in the mail, mail system, system, wherever it happens okay. to be. Hi, Carl. You have three messages. First message. Sender, Mimi Riley, on December 6th. Subject, Computer Chronicles. The message says, The taping session for Computer Chronicles will start at 1 p.m. today. 
please be prompt. Stuart manages the production schedule very efficiently and will be sure to start on time. Okay, Carl, thank you. <laughs> now, you can actually Could control the, the system uh, through the touchdown That's phone. That's right. Page. I what can, can make it do? go faster. The taping session for Computer Chronicles will start at 1 p.m. today. Please be prompt. Or I can even make it spell. Schedule very go ahead. Cap T A T. T A P I N G. So if you wanted to find the spelling for a proper name, that's correct. Like that, for example. F O R. Carl, I want to get back to you one second. Sure. Charles, you have to set up your hardware here to get Watson going. If, if you can do that, please. Carl, we'll have one more question for you. What about the other side of the coin, voice recognition? How far are we away from my being able to pick up a phone, call in a message, which will then be stored in ASCII uh, in a computer? If the capability to do speech to text over the telephone, Stuart, is still a, a little bit away, though the capability to recognize uh, individual digits, essentially to do touch tone mm -hmm. pad replacement, is yeah. close at hand. Interesting. You know, two way voice communication and voice messaging really intrigues me. And I notice we do have two telephones I've got my here. My own phone now, Jen. <laughs> Stuart, maybe you can show us uh, what you can do. Well, with I that. don't know what I can do. Charlie, I want to throw it. You've got Watson here, which gets us into two way voicemail. Explain the system. Well, what Watson is, Stuart, is a, it's a, um, a voice digitization system that collects voice, stores it on the computer disk for, f forward, uh, for forwarding to another person. This can be done uh, locally or over any telephone. Uh, what we have here on the screen is the Rolodex card motif. Mm -hmm. This uh, Rolodex card file is used as a way of collecting voice data into individual messages. Let me show you, first of all, the telephone file the telephone book file, which identifies individual users. There is, of course, a search system. And if I so exercise a search, there's a telephone and there's my, for you. My name and number. similarly, I'm sure there's one for Jan. Mm -hmm. And there we have it. Now, um, we also have what we call an outgoing message file. And here you see there are several messages in the outgoing message file. And we have a file for. Uh, incoming messages, that is, people who call in and leave messages. Okay. This is a way of collecting voice information in the computer the same way you collect alphanumeric so information. It's a kind of talking email system. Exactly. Okay, now show me how we'd actually uh, use well, this. Well, why don't you show us? Okay, what do I do? You have to call the number here, which is, uh, I think you have it, 571. Okay, so I'm going to call your computer. Yes. And then you enter in. And your computer is ringing. The computer will answer. Okay, it's clicked. Hi, this is Charlie Foskett. You've reached us on Watson. Our well, electronic this is a message voice you left messaging this is system. A generic a generic standard if you message. have a personal ID code, please enter it and retrieve your messages. So I can go in there and retrieve my particular message. Seven, eight, eight. Stuart, this is Charlie Foskett. I'm on my way to Computer Chronicles and we'll be there shortly. I want you to know we appreciate the opportunity to visit with you and your viewers. Now, can I reply into Watson? After the beep, you leave your message for me. It's confidential. I'm the only person that'll get it. OK, Charles, thanks very much. We're glad you can be on the show. Bye. And what happens now? Now you hang up. And now, Watson has recorded that message. Watson has recorded your individual message. When I come back to the office or if I call from an outside phone, I can look at the incoming message file, and I see now I have a message from Stuart. So I simply select that card and press the play key and listen to the message. OK, Charles, thanks very much. We're glad you can be on the show. Bye. That's something. That, that really is talking email, then, isn't it? Talking email. It's a tremendous benefit to people in sales forces, people that are away from their desks, people that travel a lot. And that's and it's a card, basically. Is Basically, is it's a card. Doing. It goes into your IBM personal computer. Uh, you plug one side into the telephone, local phone, and one side into the line. Great, we're out of time. Thanks so much. Fascinating stuff. We're going to be back in just a minute with this week's computer news. I'm Susan Chase, sitting in for Stuart Chaffe. In the random access file this week, it seems the turmoil at Commodore International is continuing. Reacting to the suit brought against it by former president and CEO Thomas J. Radigan, Commodore filed an $18 million countersuit last week, charging that Radigan failed to carry out the decisions of the board of directors and that his actions had been costly to the company. According to Commodore, the company spent more than $15 million importing the low-selling IBM competitors 
compatible PC-10, most of which had not been sold. While Commodore's PC-10 may not be a hot seller, software support for the company's Amiga continues to grow. WordPerfect Corporation is planning to ship an Amiga version of their best-selling WordPerfect word processor in July. The program will have all the features of the MS-DOS version with added features that take advantage of Amiga's qualities. Versions of WordPerfect for the Macintosh and Atari ST will be released later this year. A recent proposal from the Federal Communications Commission may spell the end of free telephone access to online database systems. In a 4 to nothing vote, the Commission supported a plan to force packet-switching networks such as Telenet and TimeNet to pay local telephone companies for access to their phone network. Industry analysts claim the new fee, scheduled to begin on January 1, 1988, will substantially raise the cost of telecomputing. In legislative news, a committee of the California State Legislature passed a proposed amendment to the state's constitution that would extend the rights of freedom of expression and privacy protection to electronic communications and databases. The bill, which must go through a round of ratification votes in the state legislature before being voted upon by Californians in 1988, has gained wide support from the ACLU and computer bulletin board system operator organizations. Now it's time for this week's software review. Here's Paul Schindler. I've asked this question before, but I'll ask it again. Given that today's portable computers aren't much larger than today's date books, why carry both? Well, apparently this question also occurred to the writers of TMPC, a simple yet effective time management program for laptops. Now, a lot of people complain about the lousy user interfaces of laptop software. Well, get a load of this little guy in the middle. We're going to follow him around. First, the calendar. If the date blinks, we can see a detail entry about what needs to be done that day. For any given day, you have appointments, memos, and deadlines. You can enter a due date and tell the computer to automatically enter deadline reminders so many days ahead. There's also, of course, a to-do list from which you're supposed to make up your work schedule for each day. You can even control the little man's speed. Your choices are run, fly, or walk. By eliminating the need for an appointment book, these people have made it practical to carry just a Model 100. TMPC stands for The Most Precious Commodity, a portable computer program for the Radio Shack Portables for $50 from Acro Attic of Wilmington, Massachusetts. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. The Associated Press has unveiled a new method of digitally transmitting pictures and graphics to its subscribers via satellite. The GraphicsNet graphics system slated to start this fall will deliver camera-ready artwork directly into a Macintosh computer. Beginning in 1988, subscribers to the AP's PhotoStream photo system will be able to receive a black and white picture in one minute and a color picture in three minutes. The introduction of digital transmission will allow individual newspapers to size, edit, and enhance photographs in ways that existing systems will not allow. Finally, emergency room doctors, ambulance drivers, and trauma center personnel will be able to get a patient's complete medical background almost instantly due to a new computer-based service recently introduced by Medfax Corporation of Los Angeles. For a $35 a year fee, medical personnel can phone a Medfax computer, enter the patient's ID number, and get a voice synthesized message detailing the patient's medical history, including the physician's name, and the names of relatives to contact. And that's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM compatible computer systems, including word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes compatible 1200 and 2400 baud modems. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Leading Edge, leading the way to the information age. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide.